Hey guys, M12 Warthog here, your strategist for strategy guide, and today we are playing the colonization map on Age of Conquest 4. We are doing the modern nations fully expanded, and let's just start out with talking about what advantages we have just from the just from the starting positions of all of these nations. Now, let's start out with the U.S. United States that I've been looking at. This one, I guess, is kind of good because you have a lot of territory to start with, so that means you have less territory in the end to capture overall. The only problem is, is that at first, it looks like you have a lot of borders that you have to defend. You have, like, several territories along the top here. Um... And also, on the bottom, I think you have, like, three, four, five, six. And then maybe you even want to arm these, the Gulf Coast as well, because Cuba and Haiti could easily go here and attack this. So I guess you'll have a lot of borders, and I treat um, coastlines as borders as well. Because if I were to go to war with someone, say Canada, instead of attacking my highly defended land borders, they could easily send an air force around and attack this. So you sort of have to worry about that early on. But the fact that you have more territory means that you're getting more money from taxes from a bigger population allows you to afford that bigger army and you have the bigger cities to actually do that, which sort of balances out early on. But if you don't want to worry about 20 different things at the start of the game, then you probably don't want to pick that. Now, Canada is somewhat sort of the same as the U.S., except they have less borders and not all of their cities are very big in population. As you can see here, this is a big one. I'm guessing that is their capital, because normally... Normally, they don't have capitals in the game, but I refer to a capital as where your leader starts, the territory that your leader starts out in. Although, you could always move your leader, because in Domination, is supposed to be capture all territory to win, which is like an extended version of Supremacy, so if you don't get... If you have to get all the territory to win, here's how you do it. Although, you, if you're just playing Supremacy, then you just need to get a little bit less than what we have here. So you only have to do this most of the way, but not all of the way in order to win in that scenario. But here, it looks like this is fortified, so I'm guessing that's where they're going to start out there. It really doesn't matter, though, if they start on the border, because you could just always move it up here or back to different areas if you need to. Now, let's go down to Mexico, and it looks like they're going to have borders, and they're probably going to have to defend everything, because it seems like everything's a border except for the coastlines. But, um, their coastlines definitely need to be defended, because Cuba and Haiti, Guatemala, and all the Colombias, like, right here, they could easily send naval forces right to you if they felt like it. Plus, I could send one from Hawaii over here. I think that's Hawaii, I don't know. I think that's the territory the U.S. starts out with. Okay. Then... Cuba and Haiti, looks like one of the two is going to fall early on, although they're both towns are fortified, they're right next to each other via land border, if you can't see the dots there that indicate that. So, if, and plus they don't have a whole lot of room to expand, especially because they only start with one territory. So one is going to take out the other, I believe, early on, so probably picking those, not the best option, unless it's your only two options left, then you probably want to build up as much land forces as you can and take out the other one. And then sort of expand from there with the naval force. Although by that point, people will probably start to arm their um, coastlines and so forth. <clears throat> now, when you have one one territories, when you have one territory to start with, with the nation, usually that means that people are going to attack you first turn if they have the chance and if it benefits them, because that means they can take out an entire nation and not have to deal with them for the rest of the game. And it's pretty easy to do so. Because, um, like, in my Aino, I think, which was the two, which is 1,200, year 1,200, um, that one I did on the official medieval map, I sort of used that same strategy when I played as the Byzantine Empire, where I expanded and got six to seven territories before I met, before I was surrounded by borders on all sides, then I declared war and quickly went for the leaders and got seven to eight more territories, only by doing two or three attacks and gaining two territories plus the rest of their nation as a whole because of that. And people are going to try and do that, but on smaller nations, that way they don't get big 
and never have to worry about them early on. Brazil's going to have a big presence in South America. So they can pretty much, my guess is they're probably going to be the best to take on, to take out uh, the best chance to take out the rest of South America. Unless they end up getting um, all these other nations to um, uh, team up against them. Which, usually, if there is a common enemy, they probably will, but there's a lot of one-territory nations that can't really do anything. Yeah, sure, I'll help, but I can only, like, send 50 units to a territory. It's not going to do much you have. So, pretty much, there's going to be a lot of infighting down here. <clears throat> but the really big person who's going to make the call for everything down here is Brazil. Now, if we go over to Africa, there's going to be a lot of coastlines, and if you start on a coastline, that pretty much means that all of your tr all of your territories are pretty much going to have to be armed, and you're going to have to divide your forces amongst many territories. Now, you think it would be easy for, say, Angola to attack the Republic of the Congo right here, which is right above it, by a land force, that, that would make sense because they're border, but let's say they owned... Central Africa Republic or one territory from up right here where they don't directly connect as a land border it'd be easy for them if they're at war to think to only arm this one because it's their border if you can see where my mouse is and go right above here and attack here with the naval force and take them by surprise so pretty much if you're starting there you have to arm all of your borders um it looks like most of these areas are borders to begin with. So, I'm looking at all of this in some way or fashion, whether it's a coastline or just next to another nation via land. You pretty much have to just arm everything. Pretty much has to be armed if you're there. Especially if you're... um up here in Europe. Now, Spain, if you take out Portugal, if you're playing as Spain early on, I guess the middle area you're, where, where your capital is, I guess you don't have to take out, I guess, you don't have to attack it, or worry about it being attacked or arm it, although you probably want to arm the islands that you have, because this island here is great if you're starting out, because it lets you see what's going on in the Mesopotamia. And all that stuff, but, uh... Not Mesopotamia, but the Mediterranean Sea, sorry. I was... Yeah, my words mixed up. Then France here. I guess they have mostly land borders that they have to worry about. Three, and they have two coastlines. Although, Eng England is right there. So they could easily launch a naval raid if they want to. Then again, I could say the same thing about Ireland, because they're very close as well. Greenland, maybe, but you probably would know when it's coming, because um, they'd have to move, and they can only move three tiles at once, so if they move here, you could probably see it before they attack. Um, and it's pretty common sense that if, if England declares war on France, France should probably arm its coastlines, because that's the only way that they can get to them. And there's a lot of one-territory um, nations to start out with here, and you're probably going to see a lot of these get defeated early on because one person's going to want to expand more than they're just one territory. They're not going to declare war on someone else. They also have one territory, so someone's going to lose, someone's going to win, and someone's going to. And some nations are just going to drop off early on. Although Ireland, Greenland, and Iceland are all one territory, they're probably one of the better ones to start out with if, if one territory nations are the only ones you have to start out with. Now, the reason for this is that just like the beginning of the U.S. and how it formed, we used we have thought water could be a natural barrier. This Atlantic Ocean was a natural barrier. The reason why we declared our independence from other nations that were trying to colonize us is because it took them three months just to travel across the Atlantic Ocean to get to us. And that's sort of a, reason, a good natural barrier. But early on, it's going to be one. But late game, mid game... People will definitely have money. The ones who can definitely... The ones who are willing to attack you and try and take you out will definitely have the money to afford good naval fleets. And buy large numbers of ships. So you definitely want to be aware of that. But early on, people aren't going to be able to ca 
cash out 50 coins every time they want to send 100 troops your way, so... Or maybe they just won't have the money to do so early on. Especially because of these one knee, one territory nations won't have as much money to begin with anyway because they're only getting taxed from one territory. So, in the end, that's sort of not good as well <clears throat> for you in the beginning. But that also means that you're not having a good beginning. But that also means no one's going to attack you in the beginning. Although you definitely want to expand somewhere soon and fast. Before someone gets the idea to launch some naval attacks on you. Now, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. And I've rambled on long enough. But I think now is a great time to start. And, you know, I'm from the U.S. I think I could pull off a victory as them. So why don't we just join as them? And... Of course, like everything else, we start with 100 troops in each territory. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start arming borders. Now, this is modern nations, and this is just a game. I, If I attack someone that another nation, that does not mean I hate them or anything like that. Hopefully, this doesn't actually happen in real life, because I'm thinking maybe one day will there actually be, like, no way there's, like, there will actually be technologies that prevent people from getting angry and mad and all the, out in another nation, and then we'll just, like, have no war, but until that day comes. Now, I'm going to start out with only putting 20 troops on each border, because I only start out with 200 gold, and I want to be able to protect everything. Another thing is that I only start out with three commands as well, three action points, so I'm not going to be able to do much early on, but hopefully people don't attack me. See, I told you, nations dying early off. One, one territory nations are dying, and they're going to die off easy. So we start out with three first turn, but because of our large territory, and, and how many points you get is actually based on size, I now have nine. Now, this is actually quite a good thing for me. Plus, I can use some of the mountains in case I get raided in home and in an attack. If I attack this, if this territory gets taken, I only need to arm this. I don't need to arm this because the mountains will limit my ability to move over there for the enemy to attack us and all that stuff. So, what I think I'm going to do is I'm probably not going to have enough time to arm enough points to arm all of my borders. I'll definitely have enough money for it. But I figured why not send Canada a message and say, you want some peace? Which is a permanent ceasefire until one nation or another decides to cancel diplomatic relations. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Not going to be able to... Do it all. Plus, if you can get someone to be at peace with you who's bordering you, that means you don't have to worry about attacking them until they find it beneficial to attack you. Now, as you guys can see here, I have troops here, so that means I can see what's on their border. And they can probably see that I have uh, 20 troops here and all along here. Their leader's not there as far as I know. I know their leader for Mexico's down here. So, what that means is that... <clears throat> I'm probably going to, I probably know that they moved their leader to either here or here, and then maybe moved it to there or there, but for now we don't know where exactly it's gone. <clears throat> Like I said, one one territory nations, two of them just got wiped off the map. Team. Haiti is definitely using the advantage that it has. Most nations don't want to shell out money just to attack a one, one territory nation because they're only going to get one territory. And is that really worth paying a lot of money early on? No, but if they get bigger, then of course they're going to have to put them 
stop, try, try to put a stop to them, but in this case, he's using it in reverse where he's actually allowing the water to be to his advantage in using that to sneak attack people. Because you could easily make a unit here and send it out here, but it won't be able to move on the same turn it's made, then go one, two, three, and sneak attack there. Or make it here and go one, two, three, and then go here and take them by surprise. As you guys can see, it's very easy to take someone by surprise with a naval attack because if I'm out here, Canada won't be able to see a naval force here and I could easily take them by surprise. An example of how I would be able to use that to my advantage. And I think that's what Haiti was doing early on, which is not a bad idea. Now the question is, is if I start a war with someone, will that drag me into, um, will it drag their allies into war as well? <clears throat> For now, I don't know. What I am doing is focusing on arming my borders. And, like I said, coastlines I treat as borders as well. Get this out of the way. Now this guy's keeping troops right He's keeping his leader right on the border. I could easily take that out and gain a bunch of territory if I wanted to. <clears throat> I guess he trusts me not to attack him. Canada agreeing to a peace treaty. I don't know much about Canada, but the impression that I'm getting is that all of them are very nice and they always seem so peaceful. Okay. So let's be honest here. <clears throat> Game's not going to be won if I don't expand my nation. Although I don't really hate any of the modern nations that I'm fighting either. This is just a game. So, what I think I'm going to do... Is put 100 there. I'm going to put uh, an extra 32 here. And I think now would be a great time to declare war on them. Or, yeah. So I'm gonna do that. Next turn, though, I wanna get some extra cash along the way. Make sure I can do this. Okay. So I think I know what I'm gonna do now. So, first off, we're gonna lose 28 happiness. Okay, that was a lot. Okay, that's just a naval fleet there. So, I think what I'm going to do is attack this territory here. I'm using more troops here because it's defended. Then I'm going to send this here. And then I'm going to send this, these 20 here, as backup. Now, the reason why I'm sending less troops here is because it's not directly connected to the rest of Mexico. What it's doing is actually allowing me to attack this area, and if they want to send support, they would have to attack this territory, and then this one, and then be able to send it here. Or what I would or what I would do is just make a name force and then send it there. It would be great as a counterattack if someone took this out, but it would take an act a little while and cost money to actually be able to send support to that territory if you knew it was being attacked. And did they? Yes, they... Oh my god. That is shocking. None of my attacks went through because this nation decided to... Canada decided to attack that first. I'm attacking this. And Canada decided to break their peace treaty with me. I don't like that, but my happiness is too low to bother to warrant a act of war against anyone else. I'm gonna move some troops there, make sure everything's well protected. Pretty much got that territory, the rest of Mexico, through uh, 
um, getting their leader, I guess, because that's how I have this. Now, another thing I want to point out is that I do have islands along the edge of the map here. Not really going to do much in terms of defending. Probably going to put 20 there, but like never really arm it unless I know someone's going to attack. But it's sort of allowing me, really, more than anything else, to know if any, like, if any, um, leech try to sneak by here and go down here. To sort of, like, you know, be out of view of any other fleets that may be trying to launch coastal attacks. That way, someone could go all the way down here and launch a sneak attack along this coastline or something. I'll know about it, but if it's my ally, I'm not going to care. But if I think this... But if it's a fleet that's at war with one of my allies, of course, I'm probably going to, you know... If this was an online game, you know, type in chat. I think this guy sending a fleet towards you. I can see it out right outside my island. You know, that kind of thing, but not early on. So my happiness went up because the war is over and, well, I won. Now it's just a matter of um, people canceling relations with me, and that's making me a bit worried as to what is going to happen. Although what I do think I should do is at least have a naval fleet of 100 troops that way I can send support to anything in the coast and in a turn's notice if I need to. What is this nation? Greenland. Of course they're going to expand this way because that's probably the best way to go because it's the closest territory and I'm not surprised that they did that. Although, we were at peace with Canada, and then they cancelled it, so I'm not so sure if they're too happy about this. They have 60 on the border. I don't want them attacking this, though. I don't want to give them the wrong impression, but if you're putting more troops on the border, then that's going to make me want to do that as well, just out of worry that you might launch a sneak attack on me or something. Anyway, I'm going to put this here. I'm going to hopefully not bother them, but maybe ask for peace again. Maybe they'll accept it. That's fine if they ignore it. I just won't do anything with them, so... Okay. <clears throat> Now what do I want to do? They have 111 troops there. That makes sense, because that's their foothold on mainland, and they don't want to lose that. I feel like that they could easily take out any one of my territories by doing this. But you see, if I attack this, I'm not losing any borders, because all this is still coastline. And that's sort of the thing, is that you don't want to spend too much troops on everything, but you sort of have to at this point. So what I'm thinking of doing is going to put more troops there, of course, because that's fortified. Even though I have more troops than them, I'm still going to lose because of the fortification, and I only have exactly 11 more troops than them. So... What? They accepted our thing, but then got rid of it. Again, like, anytime I send them something, they're like, yeah, sure, we'll accept it, and then they cancel the relations immediately after. So my guess is they don't like me. So now I think would be a great time to do something. So I have way more troops than them. I'm confident that we could attack them. Plus I'm going to attack from with this nation here and this one here on this nation's territory, what I'm also going to do is attack their capital. And they're not going to see it coming. Because right now, the I've been building up tensions by putting more troops here to go right after them here. They think I'm going to attack here, that's true. But I'm also going to attack them in this other territory here. Also allowing me to see what's also going down here and all that stuff as well. So, put this into plan. I'm going to... 
I can buy territory in this version, which I think is kind of cool. But I'm more or less about the strategies and battling people rather than the economic side of this, but... Okay, so let's go here. Oh, there's a mountain there. So I guess I really can't do that. Plus, I can resend out all my units from this territory. Nope, that's a land border. All my troops from he from these three territories back out to these areas to redefend them once we're done. But I'm also going to send 100 that way. Because I had a feeling that they're going to send troops from their, mi from their main territory here out onto the water so that they can retry and take this area here. And that's not going to work because they're just going to reduce the numbers that they have there and I'm just going to go right for their capital. So, they don't have any troops here, but I didn't get the territory either, which means that their leader is on this fleet here. Which is a bit of a problem. They could easily attack this territory here. I wasn't expecting that. But you know, it was the best option that they could actually do. I'm going to move this up here. If they do get it, I'm going to try and reduce the number of uh, troops that they can put there. And then what I'm going to do is send a fleet out there, probably next turn, but they're probably going to take attack and take over any territory that they want. And now that fleet's gone. Okay. I'm gonna put a hundred on the water and see what's up. I feel like I should help Canada with Greenland. I don't know why they always just... They... I'm not really sure what's going on here or if there's a glitch. Because cause they accepted a peace treaty, but they also canceled diplomatic relations in the same turn. I'm not sure what's going on. And they tried to attack my capital. Not a good idea. I'm just gonna buy more here. Ah, uh, let me think. What do I want to do now? Okay, I think this time I asked for an alliance, and that worked. That's green dots. Okay, sweet. This is not bad at all. We're doing quite well. I think for now what I'm going to do is... Fix up these coastlines that are not well defended at the moment because I had to move all of them onto a territory just to guarantee a successful attack against it. Uh, so at the moment, I feel like because Canada is going to be our ally, I'm not going to attack them for a while, but our next place to go would probably be in South America. And then from there, I feel like... I would probably go to either Europe or Africa next, but I'm not sure which one. But but that's more or less the kind of thing that when I deploy the strategy that I'm using now in a game like this, it could always change. Like, you'll expect one nation to win, but then you think Brazil's losing territory. They had a lot to deal with because they have so many borders and all that stuff. I expect them to lose territory, but at least expect them to... um. Make some big moves early on, and I'm pretty sure they did. It's just that I don't really focus on that if it's not near my border. I only focus on what's going to happen when I get there. So I'm not focusing on what's happening in South America, but I am going to focus on what's happening when I get there. They want to be in alliance with me. Let me view them. They have 3% of the provinces, which is 6 territory.
You know, I could, I could take them out if I wanted to. What's this nation? Colombia. Having a, having an ally in, uh, in South America would be good, because then I don't have to worry about them attacking me now. But someone else is going to get annihilated, I will sh I can assure you that much. Someone will be destroyed. <clears throat> okay. So, I think I know who I'm going to attack. But I'm definitely going to save money for, you know, a getting a fleet and all that stuff. Okay. So, now I got 151. Not bad. They now have 16 provinces, Colombia. But I think I'm going to go here. Move all of my troops here. And then I'm going to move down here and attack them by surprise. Now the reason I'm taking several turns to do this is that when I attack them, I want to be able to buy more troops when I get there. That way they see, oh, I have about 100 troops when I get there. I'm going to attack them with 200 and take them by surprise and buy like 300 more troops there. Then then it's going to be a bit more of a problem for them. So, I know they have troops there. I don't know if, if they have any troops there or if, or if they do, but I can't see it. And that's some of the things that you don't really... That you really can't pay attention... That, that you really don't know until it happens kind of thing. Okay. So now I'm gonna go here with everything I have. Of course, they countered attacked. But what I'm gonna do now is this is gonna be my foothold that I wanna maintain in South America, and I'm going to send a bunch of troops this way. As well as I need to make more because they're obviously going to send naval fleets to surprise attack me. They're not going to go directly by land unless they want me to know that I'm attacking them. And now that I've hold this territory for a while now, for at least one turn, I do know that I can... Can I fortify this? Yes, I can. Okay. Gonna fortify that. Send 300 that way, but I'm gonna send 200 here directly at their leader. And most likely they're gonna move their leader down there, but I can't attack directly there. But once I get here, I could attack here or here. Because once they move their leader there, I'm going to attack here. They could move their leader here or here. I don't know which one they're going to do. But if they move it here, then I can attack here and there. And, you know, sort of block them in. But we're not sure at the moment. Attacking them means I'm going to get the most out of my territories, I guess. going to send... 100 troops there. Send 100 there. Keep everything well defended. Oh my god. Wow, I can't believe they did that. It's game over for them. Okay, so at this point, I've trapped them right where I want them. Now, you see, the best option would have been able to move their leader here. That way, they have two different areas that they can move to. But now, they're done for. And I pretty much get the rest of this. Now, my only problem is that I have to ch pick and choose what I want to arm. Now... 
Venezuela here in South America is an ally of mine at the moment. So what I want to do is arm this with 30 troops, because I guess that's the most I can buy for that. And pretty much just arm everything else with... I don't know if 100 is needed, but I'm not going to have enough to arm everything. But I guess I could arm this. I might as well, seeing as I started. I guess I don't really need to arm these two right here, because these two are just, um... I guess I do because I bordered this, but not because of the... But I don't need to arm it against this nation here because of the mountains. But I guess I really can't arm everything. So what I'm going to do now... Is put about 60 here. And another 60 here. Uh... I think that's bordering. I don't know. It looks close. So at the moment, I got a pretty good lead on everyone else. I want to quickly check this. I'm actually in the lead. My ally is in second, but I have 30. So I am close to pretty much getting Grand Ruler status. But I think now is a great time to end off this episode here. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this episode of Strategy Guide. If you did, taking the time to leave any comments, questions, or feedback for me in the comment section down below would be highly appreciated. And I will see you guys later in another video. Bye-bye!